speaker, so I rise to give my support before this honorable parliament on the bill entitled the Senator's Increase of Numbers Bill 2012. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, sir, I too had the opportunity to consult with my constituency. I had the opportunity on three occasions. On three occasions. <clears throat> First occasion I had was in early December. And they too <coughs> gave me their support in order to speak on this bill and to render my support on their, give, render their support on their behalf on this bill before this Honorable House here today, Mr. Speaker. I had another opportunity to garner their support also when we had the occasion to have a joint branch meeting between the Central Basti branch and the East Basti branch of the, of the party. They too gave the support of their party in East Basti again and in Central Basti for the support of this bill that we are presently debating in Parliament, Mr. Speaker. We also had the opportunity later on, Mr. Speaker, in, a, in the executive meeting of the St. Stevens Labour Party, in which the party also gave the outstanding support and the overwhelming support for this particular bill in this honorable house here today, Mr. Speaker. So we had our support. The support of the party and the Saudi government is not coming here and speaking without the support of the various constituencies. Without the support of the constituency that I, I, I presently represent. They gave me the mandate in which to come here and speak on their behalf in support of this bill, Mr. Speaker. Very good. Mr. Speaker, I have had the opportunity to serve in this government for the last, from 1995 to this present date. And the doctrine and the philosophy of this Labour Party that is in government has been to look after the poor. And we have been doing that for umpteen years that we have been in government. Mr. Speaker, you will recall that when we came into government, we had a situation where we had lots of people unemployed in the various communities. And we first introduced the Work Experience Program. And the Work Experience Program was designed and operated as a means of assisting ordinary and poor people in this country who had not gotten an opportunity under the former administration. And we were able to put thousands of people back to work. We were able, some persons have still continued to work within the service. And to, took it as an advantage, as a means of moving themselves forward. Mr. Speaker, these are ordinary speak people we're speaking about. And these are people from all eight constituencies all around the island. That we were able to mobilize and get back to work. This has been a party for poor people all the time, Mr. Speaker. Yes, we might be going through some difficult moments and some difficult times. But we have been with them and we have tried to explain to them the difficult situation that we are going through. And we don't feel great to come here feel that it's an abstract situation that we are dealing with. The whole global, the whole world is going through the situation that we are going through. But fortunately for us, that we have a government in this country who understands and appreciates the plight of the poor people in this country. That's the fundamental point. We have heard of situations all over the Caribbean, Mr. Speaker. We are ordinary, the same ordinary poor people of work on a monthly basis and can't get paid. Listen to radio stations. It's not happen, it doesn't happen here in this federation. You go to Antigua, you have civil servants wondering, ordinary poor civil servants wondering when they're going to get paid and how they're going to get it. Mr. Speaker, it was just in December and they were getting paid early in December and it was like a joy for them. It was like something big for them in Antigua. 
Yeah. It's a big news item that we're going to pay civil servants early this month. And on time, that was, a, that was a news item. But all of us going through, and we are saying that the ordinary poor people in this country have not been going through that situation. We have situations in Grenada. We have situations in Anguilla all over the place. They have been laying off people, ordinary poor people. But we are saying that we are fortunate in St. Kitts at this present juncture, despite the global situation that we are going through and all the problems that we are going through, that we are able, we are able to hold our own at this present moment, Mr. Speaker. Yes, we understand the situation of the poor people. We understand. I have to be my own constituency. But you must be able to interact with them and speak to them and tell them of the given situation. And give them some level of hope. And that is what this administration has been doing in order to give them some level of hope. Mr. Speaker, we just last month in December, we launched the PEP program, another program as a means of assisting ordinary persons who are unemployed at all levels. Providing work for them, Mr. Speaker. Providing opportunities for them. Providing opportunities for them. That has been the philosophy and the principle of this government, Mr. Speaker. It hasn't changed. It has remained the same as it was then and it as it is today. Looking after the ordinary persons, persons who are not in a position to deal with their own circumstances and assisting and putting policies in place to deal with other situations and persons at a different level. That is what this administration is all about, Mr. Speaker. That is what we have done. So the plight of poor people is, is our cause. That is our understanding. That is our blood. <coughs> the ordinary people. And those are the same ordinary people who have told me that I must come here today and support that bill, Mr. That's Speaker. Good. Same ordinary people, the same people who are there are telling me that told us must come here and support this bill. Those are the same people, Mr. Speaker. And I'm not speaking about persons just in my own constituency. I'm speaking about persons all over who have given me that support and said, come, this is the thing that we need ever to do at this moment, Mr. Speaker. Mm -hmm. There's where it is, Mr. Speaker. So when we come and we speak about the ordinary and the poor people and the philosophy that feel that the Labour Party has moved, the Labour Party has moved away. <coughs> we have remained with the ordinary persons in the community who are thinking about what it is, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the ordinary people we come here and we speak about, those are the same poor people out there who, are prepared, who we are provided opportunities in housing for. Housing, Mr. Speaker, that's the hallmark of this government. All over the island, ordinary people from each one, each village, each community have gotten the opportunity in housing programs. The same poor people who have never had that opportunity before, Mr. Speaker. Never had that opportunity before. From 1995 up to this present day, we have given them that opportunity, Mr. Speaker. Didn't have the opportunity to own, even own the amount of land that we have distributed for the same ordinary poor people in this country. They have gotten that opportunity. They have been able to use that opportunity as to get additional money to send off their children on to a, in terms of a university, Mr. Speaker. Those are the same ordinary people. Poor people who we're speaking about. Those are the same ordinary persons when you look away and you miss somebody that got in university, those are the same people we're talking about, Mr. Speaker. Same poor people from each community, from each area, from each area, from constituency one to constituency number 11, all of them ordinary people have gotten the opportunity. And we ain't saying it because you support a particular political party, you couldn't get that opportunity to go to university, Mr. Speaker. You couldn't get a loan over there at the Development Bank when you supported the particular institution at the time, our particular individual at the time, our particular government. 
Nowadays, everybody can go over to the development bank and they get a loan. That is where we have moved from one stage to the other stage. And we're talking about democracy. That is our part of the, our part of the change that we have brought about. Democratic changes. You know how difficult it was before, Mr. Speaker? Very difficult. The same ordinary people had a difficulty in getting a loan from the development bank. Getting an opportunity to go and study. But well, we have had thousands, thousands of people over the last 15 years who have gotten that opportunity. Thousands of people, Mr. Speaker, they have gotten that opportunity to go. And more will continue to go under the circumstances, Mr. Speaker. Last year alone, in, this, last year alone in, Jan, in, in September, millions of dollars, almost $6 million the, the government had to put into the bank to assist again in sending ordinary people to go and study, Mr. Speaker. Those are the same poor people. Those are the, those are the children of the ordinary people who have got those opportunities. The ordinary people. So that this has been a government. That has sought over the last 15 years to deal with the issues of the ordinary people and those persons who are out there. Yes, Mr. Speaker, as I said, we are going through difficult moments at this moment. Difficult times. But you point to me a country in the world at this moment that is not going through difficult times. You point to me. You go to North America, North America going through difficult times. Millions of people up in North America don't have a job. You go to Europe, the same thing, the Europe crisis. You look at the Caribbean, the same situation. You go to Latin America, the same situation. You even go to China where the economy is supposed to be booming and everything is a slowdown up there now. Because China depended on the out on the on the world, the other countries, the larger countries like North America, the consumer industry for purchasing their products. They have they don't have the capacity now and the ability to purchase as they could have done before. And because of that, they have slowed down. Having a pack of that, having an impact on the whole economy. So what is happening is happening, is affecting all of us, Mr. Speaker. So the issue of what we are speaking of in terms of the local and ordinary people, Mr. Speaker, is critical. But Mr. Speaker, the bill that we have before us, Mr. Speaker, it speaks about the increase of senators. It increase about it speaks about the increase of senators. As the minister, as the representative for number two was saying in a love song, is a difficult thing. Because when other persons were in here speaking on other issues, it was not related to the bill. It was good. That was campaign speech. Isn't it? it was good. It was perfect. Perfect. And standing the line, it was okay. Fifteen years and not one of the bills. And so it was the number one. Mr. Speaker, look at the bill. Mr. Speaker, the bill, for example. Speaks to, His name, Adam. speaks to the increase of senators, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the bill, as it is, as it said, it is a simple, sticks to what is there in terms of what the Constitution speaks to, Mr. Speaker. Section 26 of the Constitution is very clear in terms of what the bill seeks to do. Mr. Speaker, this is nothing against the Constitution. It speaks about an increase in terms of, of the senators, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, the issue amongst the other side is who will get the senators to know? Who can get the senators? Because my understanding that there is some, they don't start to campaign amongst themselves which party wanted to the senator on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> and who should get it? 
don't start to argue about it. Who should get it and who want it? And they say they have to have this thing because it's something they have to do, and they would want to, to put them in a certain position, Mr. Speaker. So all you might hear some people over there ranting and waving and doing all kind of things about this thing. It's something where they wouldn't want, Mr. Speaker, because it's politics, though. Politics. The part of politics, but Mr. Speaker, is something that they would want. But we are speaking about the increase of one on the other side and two on this side, Mr. Speaker. That is what basically it is, Mr. Speaker. That is what it is, Mr. Speaker. That is what it basically is. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. When they went, when they look in terms of the bill, Mr. Speaker, and what is constitutional and what is not, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, there are other areas in the same constitution persons had an opportunity to evoke. Clause 1 1, she was evoked. Who evoked? It's part of the constitution. Other persons fell away about it. But it was constitutional. It's constitutional, and they evoked it. Tell you the story, right? We evoked it. Tell you the story, right? Tell me, right? I know it. I live through it. I know it. I know it. I know they come to join us. Now they come to join us. Now they come to join us, Mr. Speaker. Come to join us, Mr. Speaker. Okay? And they come to them, they come to them, they talk about political convenience and all kind of convenience. Those wasn't convenience at the time, Mr. Speaker. Those wasn't convenience. Those were not nothing to do with political convenience. Because at the time, it was not a convenience for them, Mr. Speaker. Those are the issues, Mr. Speaker, which we are, we, we are speaking to, Mr. Speaker. In terms of the second issue, in terms of the bill itself, in terms of the objects of the bill, speaks to the other thing. The results of increasing the number of senators are basically three. It has been found necessary to facilitate the election of a deputy speaker in order to ensure the smooth running of the affairs of the National Assembly, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm in support of that. Basically, what it is saying, Mr. Speaker, is that given the, given, given the situation that we have right now, in terms of asking someone to resign and take the position of the senator from this side, affects the smooth operation of the governance, of a governance issue. A governance issue, Mr. Speaker, and we have come here, and they have come and said there's a governance issue, also. and since early o'clock, Mr. Speaker, since early in January of, of last year, we identified some of the issues that we would want to speak to in terms of governance issues, and this was included as one of the issues of governance that we wanted to speak to. The integrity bill was another one, the freedom of information was another one in terms of governance and the issues that we want to speak to. And these are all issues pertaining to governance, Mr. That's Speaker. Right. These are the issues that we are speaking to. Right. Mr. Speaker, this bill is basically, Mr. Speaker, simple, non-controversial. But we want to make it that way. <coughs> And Mr. Speaker, I mean, as I have said and I've said earlier, is that my constituency has given me the support in terms of speak on this bill before this matter of the house and to give it the support that it deserves, Mr. Speaker. May it please, Mr. Speaker.